Seems like he didn't want to listen to Eugene Carroll's attorney um, in their closing arguments because he left about 10 minutes into the closing arguments. A different jury found him liable last year of sexually abusing Eugene Carroll in a department store dressing room back in the 90s. This jury will determine how much he should pay the writer, if anything. The International Court of Justice is telling Israel it must prevent acts of genocide. The court stopped short of ordering a total ceasefire Friday when it issued its initial ruling on South Africa's claim that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. The court also ordered Israel to take provisional measures, such as allowing humanitarian aid to reach Palestinians. The FAA says Boeing can once again fly its 737 MAX 9 planes. This after the agency completed its safety review following the in-flight blowout of a door plug on an Alaska air flight earlier this month. But the FAA accompanied the ruling with a warning saying the incident must never happen again. Megan The Stallion has released her first solo single of 2024. Wanna kick it when you ain't a this shows the Grammy winning rapper blasting her social media critics and continues her trend of snake themed singles following last year's Cobra. The release follows her surprise appearance on Saturday Night Live, where she performed a track from the new movie Mean Girls with singer Renee Rapp. You're listening to the latest on NBC News Radio. What would you do if you had a broken bone? You'd go to the doctor and use your insurance, right? Well, what would you do if you have a serious problem with drugs and alcohol? Most people do nothing until it's way too late. Your insurance can help you get clean and sober with the assistance of a place like the Detox and Treatment Helpline. Many times, addiction treatment is fully covered. So why not use your insurance to treat your addiction problem just like you would if you had a broken bone? And with the Family Medical Leave Act, you're allowed to take time off by law, and your employer doesn't need to know the reason. So there are two good reasons. You've got insurance you can use for your addiction problem, and with the Family Medical Leave Act, it's completely confidential. Call now, 800-398-7414. That's 800 800- Three nine eight seventy four fourteen. Was your car involved in an accident or just need help with dents? All Magic Paint and Body Collision Centers, in business for over 30 years. Their highly trained staff and certified technicians and friendly staff are the best in the business and treat each car as if it was their own. All Magic Paint and Body Collision Centers are family owned and offer state-of-the-art equipment and tools to ensure optimum results. They use the latest technology in computerized color matching and specialize in frame repairs. With their modern laser measuring systems, they're OEM certified, and they have four locations to serve you. All Magic Paint and Body Collision Centers offer rental car assistance with free drop-off and pickup services, too, and their work has a lifetime guarantee. All Magic Paint and Body Collision Centers are in Norco, Eastvale, Marino Valley, and in Fontana. Call them at 1-800-61-MAGIC. That's 1-800-61-MAGIC. All Magic Paint and Body Collision Centers. 1-800-61-MAGIC. All Magic Paint and Auto Body says drive carefully. Poseidon Valley True Service reminds listeners that during these trying times, blood supply levels are critically low, making blood donations essential. Take the time to donate blood today. Visit redcross.org to find a location near you or call 1-800-RED-CROSS and schedule your donation today. This reminder, courtesy of Poseidon Valley Tree Service, proudly serving the area with their full range of tree service for over 15 years. For tree trimming and service, mulch installation, and more, call 909-855-0264. That's 909-855-0264. Or visit Tree Service. ServiceLakeArrowhead.com. That's Poseidon Valley Tree Service on the air because they care. When I go, I'm gone. Are you lonely? No. No, nah, I knew that was going to be. But I, I surround myself with people. I mean, I'm always the one cooking for things. Or I'm always the one that decorates first and come to my house. All the orphans that have no place. To go. I'm going to have no place to go. So okay. I can come okay. Over. Come on over. <laughs> and life is so amazing if we can see it. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome here to, to, to 
Tuesdays. My advice on oh, not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KZAA, NBC News, CNBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Audible, Amazon Music, TV Live, Rumble, Podchaser, Spricker, Stricker, and more. We finally got it. <laughs> this time down under coming back was uh, a, a little upside down on my uh, rhetoric, but uh, so glad that you're here this morning. It is Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh no, wait, that's the Monday song. Uh, I am so delighted that you're you are here for my 1,095 podcast shows. I think I was doing podcasts before they started calling them podcasts, and I'm really glad that those who said a show about hope and happiness would not last beyond a year, because it has. And May 1st, 2012 is when I started this uh, little life project to try to balance out all the bad news with good news, so there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kanye talk at all on this show. Instead, I want you to Tune in on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. Why not 100%? Because if, it, if you're 100% happy, you're dead. And I don't want dead people walking, talking, listening, or watching instead. 88 is a pretty good number. Eight is a homophone in Mandarin. And I know you thought I was Swedish, but I'm actually Chinese. And uh, double... 88% uh, is double good fortune. So that number is for perfectionists um, really important because we can't be 100%. A lot of times we make ourselves really unhappy trying to be 100%. So that's why I say 88%. So I have topics and guests to do that. Um, you can get all of my past shows on my YouTube TV channel, which if you free subscribe, you'll also get an alarm every weekday morning so that you can tune in and uh, like the people that get to tune in that are regulars here, uh, Troy Pacelli, he has his own show on YouTube on Friday nights. He's a uh, happy Friday. So thankful for starting another weekend. Thankful to start it with Dr. Marissa Way. Hey, that's me. And lovely Alon Carter, who is on her way. Good morning, Troy. He is also the co-captain of my uh, cashew gallery chat. So if you pop in there, he will welcome you until I get a chance to do that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a uh, Friday. Friday morning. I, it was, I don't know about you, but this week went really quickly for me, partially because, as I'm going to cover, uh, and uh, Troy, you're going to have to be my co-host until Alan gets here. What are you grateful for? This is a little good life exercise or a discipline that I started this year on the show every morning with guests or without guests. We have breakfast by taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. So what are you grateful for? And I was delighted yesterday, my co-host, my new co-host on Straight Talk, James Hawthorne. He didn't like doing this when he started, but now he's super glad uh, because it was difficult for him to talk about what he appreciated about himself, which is the bottom of the button. But I'm happy to say he likes it. It's a good thing because he is my co-host. <laughs> and I do know that y'all appreciate this. Uh, shout out to Z. A uh, client of mine who uh, just said something nice on my Instagram, which is Doc Balance, by the way. People are looking for my Instagram. How come you're not Dr. Marissa there? Long story, but Doc Balance is good because I'm all about balance. And uh, you can go and free subscribe there. I pretty much live my life out loud there. So if you want to uh, check out what I do off uh, when I'm not on the show, that's where you can go. You can also go to drmarissa.life hit the social button at the top, and then you can see all of the things that I do there, or also on the red carpet on my, um, it says red carpet at the top, and you'll see all the great people that I've gotten to meet and uh, uh, flash peace with, Halle Berry, John Travolta, Quincy Jones, you name it. Uh, I've been very fortunate that way. All right, and that's my first gratitude. Um, my second gratitude is that I 
have the privilege of having this platform and continue to have it and to be able to highlight um, great people and great things. Speaking of which, Tuesday, if you missed that show, I highlighted the co-founder of Actor Center LA, a, an acting school that is not based on criticism. And she's also the beautiful wife of Jim Meskimen, who has been on my show as well. He's a fabulous impressionist. And for me, his best quality is that he's the son of my favorite, one of my favorite people, Marion Ross, uh, who is Mrs. Cunningham on Happy Days. So love to her. Um, and I, that's like four gratitudes there. Let's see what uh, Troy is saying here. He's grateful for a, a rather smooth and relatively low stress work week this week. It's about time. And uh, it is about time, by the way. Um, my, my BS belief system about time is nothing like money. Money you can make, you can spend, you can lose, you can invest. It goes up, it goes down. But time, once it's gone, it's gone. Can No do-overs. It is a, has a shelf life and it is a non-renewable energy. Um, not to say that, uh, you know, I don't live in abundant universe, but time is one of those things we get from here to here in that dash. So I hope you're, you're as happy as possible in that space. Uh, let's see. Uh, grateful for a new streaming show from South Korea that Netta and I are really enjoying. Interesting. Good entertainment and it can enrich your day. Um, let's see, does uh, Frank have any grateful? Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, I can't click it. He's grateful to be back today, and I'm grateful to be back today and having Frank in, in the studio. There's nothing like when your, your sound engineer is not there and not knocking the replacements, but they, it was, that's why I was trying to get a hold of you. I didn't want to put it in writing, but it was truly a, it's, I'm really happy to have you back. Let's just put it that way. All right. And, and if you could train your replacements, because there's still some, that front part of the, the show, while I remember, uh, as when the countdown is and which buttons to push. All right. Uh, bottom of the button, appreciation. What do you like about yourself? What do you enjoy? What do you appreciate? Why is this important? Because a lot of us, like me, have this really strong critic that says, on a no matter how good I do, or no matter how great it is, or no how how wonderful, um, there's still that voice that says, "Well, you got it this time, but you know you messed up yesterday, or you know you're not all that, or who do you think you are?" And a lot of it is stemmed in past criticism that I've gathered like a pet peeve and put in a box and it really doesn't do me well. So instead of not criticizing myself, I like to appreciate myself. And that's the muscle we do in this discipline. What do you like about yourself? So take a breath and release all the stories and the drama and tell me what you like about yourself. I appreciate that I am loving, not all the time, but 88% of the time. What do you like about yourself? Let's see. I appreciate that I, um, I, I can admit that I made a mistake. And that is not something in my Tao ancestry, my mother's uh, part of the family. Um, I remember an aunt saying, I do not apologize. <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, um, yeah. It's not, um, who says, sorry, na, 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 na. I forget the words, but something to do with a, a sorry. Oh, yes. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. So um, it isn't for me now. Uh, I still don't do it maybe as quickly as I can, but I do ask the question, what's my part in this? Or you know, um, what's my side of the street and try to clean it up before it gets infected into uh, what I talked about Monday on Mental Health Matters, that this progression of questions that is not useful in life for me is how could they do that? And why did they do that? And why me? 
And I tried to not do that and instead say, yeah, well, you know, they're, they might be in their 12% like I sometimes am too. All right, so appreciation. Uh, this is the hard part of the breakfast sandwich. I'm really not good at finding good things I like about myself, but I appreciate that I keep trying to find good things about myself. I won't give up. That's good. And that's right there. There's something you can appreciate about yourself. Not giving up, tenacity, always willing to try, putting yourself out there, um, uh, not afraid to step in it. That's five right there. Uh, hello? You, uh, you can write those down. <laughs> and then the next time you get a compliment, Troy, write it down things that people appreciate about you but until you can do it yourself you know it kind of bounces off I don't know about you but sometimes compliments I get them and I say thank you but I don't really receive them that's another thing that I've been learning how to do is receiving the compliment and that's it for the breakfast sandwich and uh thank you for joining me thank you Troy for uh subbing in for a woman who is still um, engaged, I think, in something she doesn't want to be engaged in. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be tempted to talk about it, but uh, uh, Troy, you can continue to to be my co-host until she gets here. If you've just tuned in, you wonder what's going on. It is Friday, and that is Tempting Conversations with Dr. Marissa and <laughs> Alon Carter. Uh, when she gets here, she is the daughter of the founder of The Temptations, Otis Williams, which is why we call it Tempting Conversations. And really, Friday is a day we don't necessarily have a topic or a guest, although we did last week. We had a doctor who was, like, incredible, didn't even know that I uh, he was, uh, I knew, not only knew him, I spent time with him uh, supporting Trace and, and enjoying Trace's music, and it is Mama uh, um, Carter or Mama, uh, um, my Mama Alon's mom, my honorary mom, her uh, boyfriend, and uh, had no idea he had such a distinguished list of accomplishments. But um, if you missed that show, just go to my YouTube channel, TV channel, free subscribe, and you will get to listen to that. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. So she is the daughter of the uh, founder of um, uh, The Temptations, Otis Williams. Fabulous. He's, I think he's 81 or 82 now, still performing. And uh, I am so grateful to her son, Trace Austin, who is a, an amazing performer, up and coming, coming. Didn't fall far from his grandpa's uh, musical tree. I met them, wow, a year and a half ago when I was on stage with uh, the Agape International Choir, singing, opening for the Temptations at the fabulous St. Joseph's fundraiser at the Peterson Car Museum. Wow, I'm remembering better than I usually do. I must be recovering. All right, uh, let's see. I am a poor replacement for a line that's a not a knock me. It's just stay off. Oh, that's very nice. Well, I'm gonna... Um, just do a little reminder text, please. <laughs> All right, so I am, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to say that if you participate in uh, the discipline of the gratitude sandwich every day for the next 28 days, I promise, you will sandwich your day in the most positive way. And let's just give that a little bit of a transition. All right. Um, I, I forgot to do one thing for gratitude and that is I am celebrating 15 years of sobriety and I did want to also uh, celebrate that. Just in case uh, uh, I didn't uh, uh, share that with you before. All right, let's do this. Uh, okay, she's coming. And what I'm tempted to talk about while she is uh, coming in, I am tempted to talk about swiping. 
and, and there's two things that come to mind when you say swiping. Uh, if you were a Dora the Explorer, uh, when my kids were young, they loved that show and uh, fostered a love for the Spanish language, which they both uh, then learned. Um, but swiper, no swiping. Remember that? And then, of course, online dating apps are also very uh, familiar as a, you know, one word, say the other word. So when I say swiping, you will say online dating, Tinder, Bumble, all of the, um, the, the apps that have sort of taken over the dating world. Now, I hear less and less, by the way, people saying, uh, oh, I would never do an online dating. I would never do that. Uh, I hear less and less, and I hear more and more of people saying, I met my husband, I met my boyfriend, online, on an app, and surprising to me, on Tinder, because I always thought that Tinder was a hookup app, and it may have been. Uh, I have a friend who's gay who says on, you know, Tinder for uh, his group of friends is a hookup uh, app. But I also know two people now, good friends of mine who met and, and are very much with their Tinder um, mate in a committed monogamous relationship. So uh, some of you know who have been following my life that I live out loud uh, here on the show and on my social that I have begun dating again. And I have... Um, Australia to thank for that one <laughs> when I was there sold out of books um, and had some time on my hands so I'm in a, a, a city that I don't know anybody um, in, you know socially so I thought you know what I'm gonna open the app that I, I think I was on in 2015 that was the last time so eight years of really not dating and seven years without a relationship that's a long time. So it was kind of fun and scary um, trying to reorient myself. And I know Frank is particularly interested in this topic, my sound engineer, because I had shared a little bit of it. And he's like, what? Because <laughs> I've been very happy and um, content. And I thought very satisfied with my single life. I have a very full life, uh, eight jobs and tons of extracurricular uh, things that I love to do, sailing, mahjong, playing games, my daughters, my friends. So um, no time really for, for a date. And my last date had actually said to me, I, um, what would you say? He goes, I don't have a problem being priority one, two, or, or two or three, but when I'm priority 10, that's a little bit too much to take. And I, absolutely agreed with him like nobody should feel like they're um, priority 10. so uh after seven years seven year itch or uh eight years of um not having a relationship i actually am, am warming up to the idea that there might be some value to me <laughs> that is not a um you know, I hate the C word compromise and I don't have the P word patience in my vocabulary at all. So that's um, not conducive to having a relationship. So I'm working on, uh, I'm working on my BS. I'm working on my belief system that it, that there isn't value to having someone share things with you that make it enhanceable. So I um, actually have been swiping, <laughs> swiper no swipe. And I was on Bumble first. I don't know why I just, well, I know why, because of the BS, the belief system that Tinder is for hookups. And then once I found out it really wasn't. And then my past guest and friend, Ranella, who I should have told I was gonna be mouthing her here, uh, she uh, forced me <laughs> to also go on tinder so i am now on both tinder <laughs> i am on both tinder and bumble doing oh my god things. i came in a perfect time uh, yes you did and that's what i'm tempted to talk about today because i wanted to catch you up as well 
because hold on. The, hold, we have go ahead. Time. That's like the big news is that I'm actually dating again and I'm actually using those stupid apps that everybody says are stupid and you know I don't do them or whatever. But I've heard more and more that people are actually finding um, you know, really great relationships, marriage, long-term monogamous relationships on the app. So I thought, what the heck? If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, I think this is a great topic. So, you know, from the kids, what the kids tell me is, so you know, I've heard, I had, someone just brought this topic up. I want to say good morning, everybody, first. Yes, thank you. Let's like start there. Please. I got, I, I actually had time to get coffee finally. Yeah. Mm. And uh, what, let's just so according to the kids, Dr. Hold Marissa. on, hold on. Hold on. Huh? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Yay, she's here. <laughs> Troy was uh, subbing in for you uh, while you were getting ready. And he said, I'm Thank a poor you. replacement for Alon. That's not a knock. I mean, that's a statement of how awesome she is. Aww, Isn't that you. nice? Thank you for helping out. I had yes. a bit of an emergency this morning, and I actually was up early this morning. I was up at 745. So it's not because I slept in late. I was up really early. Um, yes, my daughter had really a twin. Life. Huh? You were dealing with life. Yes, I was. I was dealing with the life. Now I, I'm a, I had to actually listen to my high frequency meditation music this morning when I woke up. So I've been doing the sound bowls. So that's oh. been helping. I love the sound bowls. I actually would like to do something. We should go on the sound bowl thing when they do the little, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, my hair, so I didn't have time to do my hair this morning, guys. So if I look a little messy, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't do my hair at all. I just you took it fine. down from sleeping, and that's how it looks today. You're beautiful. Thank you. You're so, um, so this is what the kids tell me. Tinder is for hooking up. That's what so I thought. You but probably have the better looking people on Tinder, but the better looking people are on Tinder because they just want to hook up. And then the other ones are like Bumble and all the other ones. And then they have one that's for, like, there's a category for everything. There's, you know, um, what do they call them? Um, oh, gosh. Well, we're past that. They have the ones where they, they sugar daddy ones. <laughs> No, oh, I, I need that one. I need that. What's that? Yeah, well, they want them. They want them twenty. We're we we we're not even in that. We're so far away from that. No one is sugaring us. <laughs> we don't even get. Any, we're not even getting any sprinkled fairy dust. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm not even getting any powdered sugar. I'm getting oh. some eggshell powder. That's about it. No. Oh my god, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> And That's then hilarious. they have they have the sophistication. Then they have the age appropriate one. I don't want to go on that one. <laughs> yeah, totally no. ageless. A hashtag ageless forever. No, I don't right? want that. When, when a dicky do might be on that. I don't want no dicky do's. No dicky do's. No and for those of you who missed that one, a dicky do is for <laughs> a guy whose tummy sticks out more than his dicky do, <laughs> and a booby do. Just in case you thought I was, you know, picking on guys, a booby do is when the woman's belly sticks out oh, more than booby. You know, I think that's so funny. I don't know why that's so funny to me because I never heard of that term until Dr. Marissa said it, and I could not stop laughing. So we don't want to the age. The age appropriate ones are going to have the booby doos and the dicky doos. Okay, so we don't so want that I, one. <laughs> so tell your kids that in my experience, I actually have. I'm more attracted. So the way that you you decide is how many swipe how many swipes left do I have to do before I find a swipe right? And yeah. I find more attractive people on Bumble than I do on Tinder. Really? Yes. Well, so I can tell your kids that their aunt Marissa doesn't follow that. You know, I have definitely like I probably swiped three hundred when I was in Australia. I swiped 300 times before I swiped right once. Now, when I got back to the States, um, on Bumble, I'll probably swipe left like 50 times before I find one I'll swipe right. And on Tinder, I have to swipe 100 times 
before I find one to swipe right. So it totally well, and, depends you know, also on me. Also, too, living in Los Angeles, I mean, people that are 50 don't look 50. They just don't. The men and the women live in, a, if you go to the Midwest, it's shocking to me because people that live here that are 50 look 35. And that goes for the men and the women. Because if they're not doing surgery, they're doing some kind of filler or Botox. And you see more men in the Botox office than you do the women. So it's such a big thing. And everybody now is in o on Ozempic. Everyone's walking around skinny again. So, <laughs> um, you know, LA, LA, we're so like obsessed with looking good. I don't think it's an age thing because that doesn't bother me. I feel so much more mature and so much more knowledge. Like if I can go back to 25, no, I say 35, like 35, I think was when you look your best in my opinion. Um, you know, cause your face looks like you should look and you don't look like a little kid anymore. I think that, that 35 is a good age for me. Right. I think I look my best at 35. If I could have the knowledge that I have now, then that would be great. But if I could not have the knowledge that I have, I don't want to go back to 25 because I didn't know shit from sh shoot from, from Shiola. <laughs> I should shoot from Shy. Shoot. Frank, I hope you caught that. So um, <laughs> it was an expression, folks. Yeah. Uh, FCC fines me 20000 every Don't bring it up. She said so, something. So anyways... <laughs> Um, what were, what were, oh, oh yeah, age. Okay, so the thing, okay, here's, here's what has uh, dawned on me from swiping. One is I'm surprised that people will put pictures up that, like that first picture is, is like some people's face is like <laughs> so close that like you can see the pores on their nose. And you're like, yeah, that was an automatic, really? Your first, you want to give me your first impression of the pores on your nose? So that's a little hint for those guys yeah. who have these real close clubs. Don't do that. It's not good for you. And um, I think that uh, it's interesting. There's, there's uh, at least 10% actually say they're in an open relationship they're happily married and are they looking call that for pansexual right is that the uh, term of pan I don't know no, which that's sexual it is but but the but i'm shocked at how many of those there are online you but know do you but, think they're telling the truth i think yeah that some I of them are, they are saying that they're open just so you already know they're married but be, i bet you their spouses don't know that they're on tinder you know well, what I'm saying? Some of them have a picture of the spouse with them. So well, maybe they, maybe that's what they want to do, you know, little. Yeah. Well, 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 I have to give credit. They have a category now that says, you know, what are you looking for? And it will say something casual. So, the, you know, if you want a relationship, don't swipe on someone who says. So that's casual. Tinder though, right? Tinder? No, that, that's Bumble too. Oh, yeah. So that's good. I think that's but a I, good. But I think the reason why people's pictures don't look good, because people don't have most, the average person does not have a professional picture. So what they do is they use their cell phones and their cell phone now, the pictures are such high definition. They don't realize that it doesn't look good. You know what I mean? You yeah. Need to set the setting up. And so probably most of those people probably look much better in person than they do well, in the picture. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm going to go the other way though. Some of them look really good in the pictures and they don't look good in person. So video chats are vital. This is something I never used to do. I used to, you know, chat for a little and then meet for a coffee or uh, actually I would meet for dinner and then the dinners were so long. And if you knew in that first second that you weren't attracted, it was right. a long dinner. So however, however go ahead. No, I was going to say, too, I would think, I mean, I haven't done anything like that. I'm married. But I would think that, hi, Maria, <laughs> um, that they're not telling their age. I bet you they're using old pictures, and then you see them in person, and then they're, like, 15 years older. And even when people age, right, 
even if you look older, a lot of times you can tell, okay, that might be a younger picture. You don't look like that in person. You look a little bit more mature, but some of them change so drastically and they're still using that picture. Yeah, it reminds me of those apps that age you, like the first pictures when they're young and as you scroll down, <laughs> you see how, how they look really now. And yes. uh, it's, it's, it's really something. But here, here, this is the other thing. What I find attractive and what someone else finds attractive are so different. So, yeah. you know, I, I've also uh, stopped saying that it's superficial to judge people by the way they look because that is some part of that. And if you're not like, you, if you don't feel something in your furnace when you're looking at them the yeah. first time, then, you know, that's, you want to be not true. That's not true with men. You're validated by how you feel because, you know, even though they say that men are the ones that seek out, women are the actual ones that are the hunters. We've always been that way. We could walk into a room and it could be a hundred guys and you and I have, some, we're, we don't have the same taste, but we have the same type in the men that we like, right? So we can walk into a room and we both are like radar. And I'm like, I know what you're looking at before you look at it and you'll say the same, right? And she's so, busted me too. Right. I'd be like, oh yeah, I see what you're looking at over there too. Like two o'clock over there, right? We'll do the time thing. <laughs> I've already spotted it, right? So the point is we know instantly when we see someone as a woman, if we want to put you in the friend zone or not, which men just have to look at the body. They're, they're just, they're, their hormones are so different. Um, I was watching 90 Day Fiance, not to go off the subject, and this Russian guy, really handsome guy, is dating this transgender woman. I love that show. And he didn't know that she was transgender in the beginning of the relationship. She finally admitted it, right? So now they're back together, and he's, I think he wants to come to the U.S. But anyway, he won't be physical with her anymore because he didn't know. And so it's psychological, and she's getting really angry. And bringing up the fact that she has to have sex she has to have sex and my mom and i were sitting there going see at the end of the day that's still a man because he's trying to romance her and that's all she think about and it's like that's still those man hormones that the women don't have whereas his men go for other reasons why they're attracted to someone um they can go for they can just like my mom said a, a stiff one has no conscience so if you meet a fine sexy body in the middle of the night and you take her home and then you wake up the next day she's busted they don't care they had a good time they sent her away <laughs> which us we have to have that physical attraction and i think that's what brings people together now we have different reasons why we're attracted to people but i believe you have to be physically attracted to the person because if you marry someone you're going to have issues in a marriage you're going to have disagreements the the lust and the passion and all that phase right you still have to find that person physically attractive. And yeah, if you don't, for sure. the marriage definitely won't work because they already, you know, you get on each other's nerves after a while. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then the whole thing, uh, and you, uh, I need your advice on this. So okay. uh, if they don't put down, like I already sort by um, education, I, you know, now, again, it, it's going to sound like I am judging and I'm really not like I, I, I don't think, you know, what level of education it, it, as you go further doesn't mean you're better than me. I totally, you know, don't think that. However, I do believe that by having a certain um, education, I want someone who kind of had that similar experience. Mm -hmm. So. That's why education is important to me. Sorry. My husband, my husband was one. My husband was uh, someone who was, you know, was misrepresentative of his education. I thought he he had an AA and it came out of discovery. He didn't. He uh, went to a school to get his G GDE, uh, G, G, his high school diploma. So. It's the disparity or the difference in experience that was, that is important to me. So, and then if they don't put what they do, another thing about me is I am so attracted to um, uh, achievement. Uh, I'm attracted to that determination and, and really, you know, 
busting your life out and, and going for it and, and accomplishing things. So for me, your job and, and what you've done is important and that's attractive to me. So when that's a guy sexy. doesn't put down, yeah, sexy. When he doesn't put down what he does. It is to be an entrepreneur, to have his own career, to have to run a company. You see older men with beautiful young women that they, they may not, they could be just average looking guy. But if you have a nice company, a home, and you could call it superficial, women are attracted to that. Just like men are attracted to youth and beauty. It's the same thing. Men who sit there and call you a gold digger, but we have this, for us being, that, that, that reads power to us. That means protective, to protect us. You know, that's what we want. And same thing with them. It's just a different dynamic of what they find attractive. I find a man who has a great career, who's intelligent, who I can have a conversation. We could travel. We could talk about world things. They don't have like tunnel vision. That's to me is more attractive than anything. Cause I want to talk about different cultures. I wanted to try different foods, different cultures. I want you to be open. I don't want someone to be like, I'm American and this is what matters because that's right. not what matters in the world. That doesn't make right. you grow. So we like, you and I like the same things. That so, then, so then when I ask them, I, and I, I actually say, um, um, can I ask what you do for a living? This is in the, the messaging, right? After you match. Uh, I said, can I ask what you do for a living? And I, and at the risk of sounding superficial, but I've learned the hard way that if I don't ask, it's not a good thing. So I do that and then they'll tell me. And so uh, one said, uh, I am a delivery truck driver and, uh, and you know, said that. And, I, and I'm like, okay, so my husband was a delivery and I used to make up that he was bigger than he was not bigger, but different than he was by saying he did sales and marketing for Anheuser-Busch. When in, in, right. in effect, he was a delivery truck driver for a bottler of soda and beer. And and because of my own stuff, nothing to do with him. Right. He was happy with who he was. I wasn't happy with who he was. So I had to make him, and that's, you know, that's on right. me, right? But knowing that now, I, the last thing I want to do is go back and repeat the things that I've done. Exactly. Yeah, right. So how do I say, how do I respond to that? You do the Irish goodbye. What's that? You don't know the Irish goodbye. <laughs> when you're at an event or a party, or I say church on the go, like Snoop Dogg says, when you're at an event, say we go out and we want to leave. And mm -hmm. I act like I'm going to the bathroom and you act like you're going to the bathroom, but we don't say bye to the host. And we're like, oh, we were looking for you, but we didn't see you. And we go to the car and take off and go home. <laughs> That's the Irish goodbye. Why, why, is, that called, why is that called Irish? I don't know. And so oh, Luke so had a TV show and he called it Church on the Go. Church on the Go is he has his whole posse, right? He was at this thing and he had this acupuncture and the, and the, and the acupuncturist was blind and he was, and he was already afraid of needles. And when he found out that the, the acupuncture guy was blind and was giving him the needles, he said, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. And he saw his posse, he ran, he goes, church on the go and everyone dispersed. So that means like, if he says church on the go, everybody leaves. <laughs> so I love I learning my new friends. Things. Everyone knows what Irish goodbye is. So I can't say Irish goodbye. I tell my friends church on the go. So that's our code. So no one knows we're all going to leave. I learned, on the go. I learned something new today. So yeah. you would unmask without saying anything. So just do the Irish goodbye. You quietly say you went to the bathroom and didn't come back. You go out of the country and don't come back. Say, oh, I have <laughs> to go back to Australia where I got to go to London. Somewhere. Oh, oh, just go. Okay. Run, no, no, no. I, I haven't met them yet. I haven't met them yet. This is just on 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 messaging. Oh, well, then that's even easier to do the Irish goodbye. Come on. Yeah, that's, you know that's what? You already you are already answering your question. You already know where this is going. You've already experienced it. You know you're not going to be interested in the delivery truck guy because you yeah. want to be proud of the person you're with. You know, when you're in your 20s, that might be fine. You're like, oh, he has a nice job. He's a delivery truck yeah. guy. But when you get to our age, we are not, we don't we don't we know where that's going, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's we want someone we could 
Yeah, that you can grow and evolve with and, and build something together. And you want someone who has more asp in, uh, aspirations in life to do something than to do that as a mature person. Yes, and that's not maybe a deadline. He has, maybe, he life. Has a, maybe he has a hobby on the side and he has his own, like, uh, maybe he's writing yeah. a book or something. Yeah, that, and please, please hear that if you're starting to judge me for being judgmental, I, I am totally, you know, I, that's not where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a place that like a lot of sense, if you're younger and I just met uh, my younger daughter's boyfriend on zoom and gave him the inquisition and everything. And what I was judging him on beforehand was what he's doing now in their early twenties. Right. And what, after I got to know him, I, I was like, wow, I like that. They want to grow together. They want to achieve together as a unit. And that's what they've decided. So that's fine. And that's great. And I'm not judging that. Or I'm trying not, you know, I, I've really had a, a good talk to myself about judging that. And I'm not. So I'm happy that I'm not. Now, for me, though, at my stage of agelessness, that's not, I, I don't want to build something with someone who is looking to build something from ground zero or ground, mm -hmm. I shouldn't use those numbers, but just, I'm not at a place in life where I would like to grow. You don't want to something. start there. I don't want to start it. Thank you. Good way. To I don't want to start there. I want to be able to go out and travel and do the things and live life. I don't want to live life to survive. Right. Yeah. I want to live my life and enjoy my life. I'm at the age where I've done so much and tolerated so much and been through so much that I want to now enjoy my life. My best friend was talking about buying new property and you know, this girlfriend of mine, her husband lives in, in, in Texas and they're talking about buying property and they have no kids. And I said, listen, not that I don't want you to not, you know, buy property. You already have a property in, in, in Los Angeles. You have no kids. Why would you do that? You're retiring this year. Take that money because she's always saved and always been like about investment and money and this. And I said, enjoy your life now because you don't have any kids and you and, and your niece and nephew you already have you stuff to leave them. Enjoy yourself. Stop. Like you have to be at the age where you're going to start all over again. Don't do that. This is the, mm -hmm. so you want someone that you can just take that money and travel with it. I said, you and your spouse travel. He's almost retirement age. You're retirement age. Enjoy what you're doing. Because that quality of life is going to give you longevity. Yes. Anything can happen when you get to the, uh, this age. You have to have a nice life where you have the quality so you can live longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and this is the balance of what I'm realizing is there's a balance between having expectations that are unrealistic or just like, I'm not perfect and I want to find a perfect guy. Like, no, that's There's not no gonna one happen. perfect. That's that not going to happen. But on the <laughs> other hand, right? On the other hand, there's nothing wrong with wanting certain things. Okay. Yeah. We got, we got a, we got a, a, um, a heart emoji or kiss emoji on that one. Thank you very much. If you just tuned in and wonder what's going on in studio, we're getting into a lively conversation about online dating because yours truly has entered that sphere thanks to Australia. And uh, so I haven't even caught up and told my, my bud um, BFF here, Alon, about my little escapade. We, we have to happened. go out. We have to go out and get something. Listen, we have to go catch up and get some some little nibbles, kibbles and bits that we like yeah. to have. You know, our kibbles and, and it, bits. But yes, this is the thing. Anyone that's out there in the peanut gallery right now, I ask Cash you to gallery. join us and give us any of your input of dating apps that Dr. Marissa can go on and explore. Because I think she needs more than those two, right? You got to go on several. Yeah. It's so much time, though. I'm actually going to get off of Tinder because it's too much. It, the well, what about when you're at night and, you're, in the, and you're, you're going to bed and then you sit and you're on your phone? You can just swipe until you fall asleep. <laughs> well, swipe some myself new ones. to sleep. Swipe myself yeah. to sleep. Anyways, you're listening to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. Oh, 
show here on KCAA NBC News Radio, and it is Friday, which is the Tempting Conversations with Dr. Marissa and Elon Carter. Here he is, and we're talking about online dating. We're so happy that you're here. If you would like to participate and you're not driving, please do. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, TV channel, and you will get an alert every weekday morning that you can join in. And today is always a fun day. We're, we're, we're getting you sliding into the weekend with some tempting conversation. And we're talking about advice for me on online dating. But the reason why I don't want to do other apps is I'm actually meeting some pretty cool people on Bumble. And I have, it's challenging me to get that balance between, you know, looking for someone who has everything that I think I want. Do I really, you know, what is it that I really, really want to match on? That question has never really, I, I either had a huge list, which is unattainable, or I had no list, which is dangerous. <laughs> well, you know, so, I, 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 I'm always on my TikTok stuff now. I, for, for the longest, I wouldn't get on TikToks. And now I'm on TikTok. So there's one that keeps popping up that I know you're going to like, and I'm going to send it uh -oh. to you because it's, it's younger men who like mature women. I'm going to send it to no, you. No, 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 no. There's no part of the word cougar that I am remotely interested in. Yeah. They say you, they like sophisticated and, women. Is no, this a no. cougar? She no, said, I'm not taking care matter. of anybody. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 already, I already took care of yeah, I, 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 I use a lot of money to take care of a man, and yeah. I ain't doing it again. I don't right. blame you. I, when I, I'm I'm a I call it, we're not cougars, we're barracudas. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a barracuda and don't even care. I'm over it. I'm like, no. I'm not taking That's, care of anyone. For sure. Uh, Troy is answering your question. When I was dating, there were no apps. Yeah, her, he's been married to Netta for 31 years I get that right? Yeah, there was no apps um, when I was dating either. Involved answering a bunch of questions. Okay. Uh, so his he his computer name involved answering a bunch of questions that were transcribed into punch cards and put into a mainframe. Wow, that's dating yourself. And, and the fact that I know what you're talking about <laughs> is dating me. <laughs> so much for hashtag ageless. It is a new day, and I know a lot of people, some friends of mine who are married, who just yeah. like shake their heads and say, "Good for you," because I could never do. The oh dating yeah, today. My sister yeah. has an amazing career; does really well. She's in New York, and she's young, and she still is not in a serious relationship or has been married. And my stepsister and I both have been married. My stepsister's been married two or three times, right? <laughs> And I've yeah. been married the whole time. And when I try to give her advice, she's like, oh, you're just older. You don't know better. I said, well, we both have been married and you haven't yet. So obviously you need to listen to us, right? We're <laughs> trying to tell you because the hookup thing is not working for you, right? At some point, you're going to be aging out where someone wants to marry you. So you need to find other things and other interests in people because you're getting at the age where men are going to start going for the 20 years, no matter how great your career is, because that. When you, the kind of men that she likes, even though she does phenomenal, it doesn't matter to them because they can afford whatever kind of woman they want, right? When they, they have that kind of career and that kind of money, they can afford whoever. So they don't care. It's good that you have a career, but they don't care because men are all about aesthetics. So I'm trying to get her to, you know, uh, look at other things and how to approach it. But she thinks I'm corny and I just go, okay, well, good luck. That's the one that looks Asian, right? Well, she's that's half Filipino. Sister. My sister's half she's Filipino. Half Filipino that's she's right. Filipino she and it. Chinese. So her okay. her grandmother is Filipino, Chinese, and her um, my dad's Native American and Black. So she is a mixture of everything, but she looks Filipino. Yeah, yeah. That's but she's one. in Paris right now. She travels all the time. So I lived in London for so long. I tell her all the time, you will have more luck marrying someone overseas in Europe than you will here in America. The men here are just different. They've gotten pretty bad. I'm sorry, dudes, but you have. I think <laughs> the men <laughs> still have a bit more chivalry. Over, and, and the European men have more chivalry than they do here. Yeah. Um, and our L.A. guys want the women to take care of them. They're all models and actors. So you have that 
you know, they want you to support them and the woman should pull their weight. So you still have the European men are still have a lot more chivalry, what we want. And I said, you have, my grandmother used to always say that to me, you got to go back to the basics. She's like, you're going to be single. If you don't go back to the basics, make someone court you. If they're not courting you, don't waste your time. Okay. And then she I'm died. Glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. Right. So I... my grandmother died, right? And I had, yeah. this is when I'm in my twenties and I have all these gorgeous friends. Like, I don't think, I don't know if you met my friend, you know, my girlfriend, Akana, the Japanese girl, got Japanese and black, really beautiful. Yeah, with yeah, really yeah. Long hair. yeah. So yes. her and another friend of mine who's actually married now, beautiful girls, all models. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was like, you guys have not, I, I can't believe you guys are not married. You guys are such beautiful women. Right? We were young, we were in our prime and we were all modeling. And she goes, what's wrong with these guys? And then before she passed, She's like, you have to go back to the basics. Now, my grandmother had been married three times. She was my great grandmother. And I was like, oh, she's old. And then after she died, like the light came on, like she was talking to me saying, the next person you go out with, make them court you. And that's when I end up marrying my husband. If they don't court you, they don't value you. You're like a car to them. Men, you know, they, they value the kind of car they have, right? If they have this high-end sports car, they're gonna polish that car and baby that car. That's how men yeah. treat women. That's <laughs> what my grandmother said. I've got my top down. Ha ha, convertible. Um, anyway, if, but this is the thing that I'm finding that, okay, I'm not swiping on people that say they want something casual because that's saying, you know, you basically just want to hook up, right? And right. I don't want to hook up. I would like to see if there's someone that, you know, I can have a relationship with that is, you know, augmenting my life, which I'm allowing now for the first time, the possibility of. And so I do want to be courted. I do mm -hmm. want to, you know, have, but then when they're like that forward in the first, you know, three sentences, you're so hot, you're so sexy. Yeah. You're so, it kind of, I'm like, that's a turn off. Yeah. So then like, where's that about? But then like, if you start chatting and everything's good and they're like, you know, they start with the, you know, what is it going to be like? What, I can't wait to get you alone. And you're at that stage, right. Where that would feel good. And then, but you're like, but I want to be, I, I want to be cast out. I want to be right. like courted and taken right. out. And um, the response was, you know, don't, don't have to, have a, you know, a set playbook or something like that. And yeah. so I was like, but I want to be, exactly do this. The yeah. because the thing is for me, if, if, if I meet someone and they, you know, of course you want to be told you're pretty, you look good, but if someone yeah. comes across sexual right away before we even gone out and start asking me sexual questions, I am instantly turned off because I don't even think you should be even going there with me. And I think it's just a different generation. If yeah. you want to date me, take me out, have a conversation with me, and then work your way into it. It's not that I yeah. even want to have that conversation. It's just a turn off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Guess what? Yeah. We're on our last I know minute we're out of time. already. Um, we have two minutes. Thank you, thank you for joining us today on Tempting Conversations with Dr. Maritza and Elon Carter. It's all about balance. We'll continue this discussion next week as I keep you uh, on a soap opera as the stomach turns in Dr. Mercer's dating life. <laughs> it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. Now go and have the best weekend ever. Bye. See you Monday. And the cake one. NBC News on KCA.